Hi everybody, this is Angelo Quinones saying you reach Iron Ministries. Iron Ministries is designed to give you dependable and accurate answers that come straight from God's holy and inspired word, the Bible. And I'm just checking out if this could get brighter and brighter. <clears throat> no pun intended. <laughs> that's what when we're dealing with the witnesses, that's the excuse that they give us, you know, that, ah, oh, well, we was teaching that, you know, you can worship Christ in 1954 in the charter. They don't even tell us that. They want us to, to figure that out by ourselves, you know, you know what I mean? And we do, looking at their libraries and stuff like that and, and, and things online, Jehovah's Witnesses, Facts.com, you know what I mean? That they worship Jesus, they worship Christ. In 1954, and then they changed it in the 1960s and the 1970s. Hello. Hi. So I'm doing something, Godfrey. What do you need, my love? My stuff's on. Okay, get some juice there if you want. Get some juice there, okay? Say hello to your uh, stuff sister. Say hello. Is she sleeping? Okay, well, go get some juice, okay? I'm doing something, my love, okay? All right, sorry about that, guys. So, I mean, so that's just the deal. So we can't trust the witnesses. Never. Now, that's just a deal. Now, we're studying um, John 1.1. 1, 1. The full Greek construction of John 1.1. 1, 1. There isn't a series out there on YouTube like it, okay? And that's just not to, that's not to boast or anything like that. But that's just the fact that there isn't another series that goes into the full Greek construction. of not only that chapter and verse, but everything that has to do with us battling. Huh? The cell phone? It was just right over there. This, this, your cell phone's right there. I'm just talking to my wife. Uh, battling uh, JWs. Okay, hi, sweetheart. All right. It was there, honey. I saw it there uh, under your pillow. That's where the last time I saw it, my love. Okay, because I clean. I mean, I, it should be there. Okay. So, sorry about that, guys. So, so the thing is that there's, there isn't a series like this, uh, John 1, 1, full reconstruction, and then we go off the road of studying John 1, 1, and then we get into other verses that have to do with us dealing with them. Any verse that, that comes into play. Now, I know it's impossible to deal with every single verse in its history and that will come up in the future. When I'm gone from this earth, of course, other verses will come into play. New verses that they'll invent because we, we dealt with those, so they have to do something else. Okay? So that's just the deal. You found it, hon? Okay. So one of the things that they like to say is that Jesus gave up his nature. That's what Mark from Missouri says. Okay, I was listening to something uh, battling Mark from Missouri, and he's wrong. Okay, that's the Greek R. Okay, that's the wrong. Wrong, actually. Now, it says something like this. Uh, who, although he existed, better, tra better translation is subsisted. Okay, or subsisting, actually, it's a participle there. We're going to see that. Who, although he existed in the form of God, okay, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. Okay, let's just check that out. But we're going to check out this also, but emptied himself. Taking, this is verse 2, taking the form of a bond servant or a slave and being made, okay, in the likeness of men. Now, let's deal with those two verses. What's, what's this, Godfrey? Yeah, you can have that. Yeah, 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 sure. Scat, play outside for a little while, okay? Okay, bye-bye. Brush your teeth first. Brush your teeth. Leave that there on the table and brush your teeth immediately. Go ahead. Brush it, because I know you didn't do it. Now, what does this, what does this verse, what doesn't it say? That's the royal method of studying the Bible. Well, first of all, it doesn't say that he gave up the nature of God. That's number one. Number two, it doesn't say that somebody gave him the nature of God, including God. Okay? It doesn't say that at all. It doesn't say he was in the form of a creature. He was in the form of an angel, or whatever the case may be. Now, you know that J.W. say that he was Michael. I don't see that here. I don't see that here. They're lying, because I don't see it here anywhere. You understand what I mean? Now, the only thing that he took up is the nature of man. The only thing that was made was his flesh, and he had a part in making it. Okay? That's, it. That's why he's not a creature, because he had a part in making his own flesh. He took a hold of the seed... Of, da of David. You understand what I mean? 
So he came in that line. He's the root and offspring of David. He, meaning he's the creator, uh, creator of David. The Greek word is chriza there, the root. So he's the root of David. David is not the root of him. He's the root of David. You understand what I mean? So he is the beginner of David. He is the architect of David. He is the <coughs> creator of David. So, but he's the offspring of David at the same time. Having full power and full control and full knowledge, and he can do that. You understand what I mean? That's just the deal. Now, um, let's look at the first part because we're going to look at this, uh, these, all of these clauses, and this is very important. Did he, did he let go of the deity? Now, listen. Jesus has two natures: the nature of God and the nature of man. The nature of Theos, okay. Obi Theo, because the nature of Theos, right? Obi Theo, the nature of, of Theo, right? And he also has the nature of man, Anthropo. It's really Anthropos in the lexicon, but Anthropo, the nature of man, right? Of uh, man. Now, in Hebrew, you can say he has the nature, in the nature, meaning the second nature of the B nature, of Adam, or he has the nature of Ish. Ish means man also in Hebrew, okay? That's just the deal. So he has that nature. He has two natures. What do I what do I call them? I call the first nature his essential nature, his original nature, his God nature, nature A or nature one. He subsisted in that nature for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds without number, zillions of years. Okay, you understand that? Without any beginning without father, without mother. A patron, a metron. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 3 uses the allegory of Melchizedek to actually describe the eternality of Jesus. Bye-bye, uh, Godfrey. Be a good boy, okay? All right. So he subsisted in that nature. That nature wasn't given to him by God. He didn't take the nature or anything like that. Okay, he wasn't created. It doesn't say energe epoyas and hate as tan lagan anywhere in the Bible. Okay, in the beginning, God created the lagas. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say energe egenita ha lagas anywhere in the Bible. In the beginning, okay, of the word emerged or the word be became or the word began to be. He doesn't even say about Abraham, before Abraham began to be, I began to be. He could have easily said that. He didn't. He didn't. And nobody else did. The apostles never said that. You understand what I mean? He doesn't even say something like this. Okay. Um, for he was before me. Okay. Protos mu. What do you mean protos mu? Before me. Well, that God was before me. The Father was before me. He never said that. There's no stark evidence in the Bible. Not even vague evidence in the Bible. That Jesus is a creature that he was created and that's just a deal. That's a myth and a crime by the Watchtower and Bible Track Society who never got anything right, by the way. Never, ever, never got anything right, including the, the dates of Christ's return. They said that Jesus was going to uh, return, okay, way back. Uh, they predicted this in, in, in 19, and probably started before that, though. But the facts of it is 19, that they said in, in an article, okay, 1968 on i believe august the 15th okay 1968 that jesus was going to return before october the 1st 1975 he never did he never did return okay now you may say to me well brother camping from your evangelical circles predicted the 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 the, the end of time he predicted it twice 1994 and 2011. I agree. But who says he was a Christian, number one? And who says that he was speaking for Christianity? Okay? The whole pool of Christianity was saying, I mean, somebody debated him. I'm not going to mention his name. Somebody debated him uh, from Christianity, okay, evangelical circles, on that point that he shouldn't do it. He did it anyway. He got into trouble and he died around uh, 2017 or 2018 or whatever the case may be of a heart attack. You understand what I mean? He shouldn't have done it. He shouldn't have said that Jesus died twice. That's, that's the sin that Moses did. He shouldn't have said that, that there's annihilation. It sounds like the witnesses themselves. Maybe he became a witness. I don't know. 
He never should have predicted the dates of Christ because Jesus said not to. Jesus said it's not for you to know. So why do it? And I don't care who does. Whoever does it, you can't trust a source like that. And that's why I stopped listening for, to family radio. And that's why I'm never going to become a Jehovah's Witness, okay? Because I can't trust these, these people. And you shouldn't either. Now let's get back to this. I mean, you can't, before we do, we, we can't trust anybody who, that says that nobody's going to go to the moon. And 24 people did, though, guys. Nobody was going to go to space. And then, you know, Captain Kirk did. William Shatner, the Starship Enterprise. You can't make it up, guys. Captain Kirk did. I saw it myself. He broke the plane. He went around 368,000 uh, miles into space. Come on. You can't say in the truth shall set, shall set you free around page 285 or whatever it was, okay, in 1943, that nobody was going to go to the moon. And then 600 people broke the atmosphere. You can't make it up, guys. Now, I wonder if that's including other countries that went up to space. I mean, they have a space station up there, guys, right now. Can't make this stuff up, though. You can't tell me that nobody was going to go to the moon and 24 people did. That means I can't trust you. All right. That's it. So can I trust you here? I mean, get rid of this shadow. I mean, you know, it's like we're shadow boxing or something. All right, Philippians chapter 2. But wait. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2, verse uh, 5, okay, before we, t uh, we tackle verse 6. It says over here, before it tackles us, okay, you understand what I'm saying? Have this franete, have this attitude or mindset or mind in yourselves, which, okay, was also in Christ Jesus. I think that's in the date of case over there, okay, uh, probably Yesu Christo, but we'll check it out in the Greek. Verse 6, who, although he existed, like I said before, there should be subsisting, or at least subsisted, in the form of God. Let's check that out. Check that out in the Greek right now. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses like to say that he gave up the nature of God, or that he never was in the form of God. I actually spoke to a woman in a white car. She, I, I, I remember her right now. Okay, in a white car. She was in a white car. She was in a passenger seat. And she, she, she said that oh, he was never in the form of God. Really? That's what the Bible says. So I'm supposed to listen to you? No. All right. I wonder if the car worked, by the way. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Let's go to chapter uh, beta. Nowadays called Vita. The beta can be a V in, in modern Greek. There is no V in biblical Greek. There's no W. There's no SH. I mean, you know. There's no H, so you have to put a rough re -re marker in front of a vowel or in front of a, a consonant like R. All right, so uh, let's check this out. Verse, um, verse 5. Because uh, the Apostle Paul tackles two things at the same time, okay? He actually uh, kills two birds with one shot or one stone, I mean, you know. It says over here, tuta, tuta gar. Franete, or actually over here, it's actually different. It's, it's uh, franesto, franesto, en humin, en humin ha kai, en Christo, Jesu. Okay, if you can't say Christo, <laughs> Christo, it's very hard to say, guys. Just say Christo, and you, you, it's, it's okay, it's understandable. I mean, goodness gracious. The Greek word tuta is a is an adjective here. It means this, okay? Ekanos means that, okay? So this, uh, let me see right over here, okay? So tuta means this is, a, is an adjective. Have this uh, attitude or, or mindset. So the, uh, the this refers to is the adjective of uh, franest here. I think I saw another Greek uh, app that had franete, actually, franete, with the te being in the second uh, person, uh, uh, a plural, you know. But over here is fra 
Nestle, from Nestle. Mindset, attitude, mind. In Greek preposition, N, you all, because that's who mean. That's not a singular uh, a pronoun. This is a uh, uh, second person personal pronoun from a plural part of a paradigm, who mean, in a, in a dative case, no gender, uh, dative case and in the plural. Okay, so it has number and uh, case, but no gender, the first person and uh, second person personal pronouns. Okay, who mean? Atuta does though. Tuta has a gender, doesn't a neuter. Okay, that's from hutas. Oh, hutas. I hate to say hutos because it sounds like an adverb, you know. And who mean, uh, which, ha, huh? and that looks like an article, but that's actually a relative pronoun. And the, the only difference you see between an article and this is that, and, and, and ha is a weak demonstrative. It, it, is, oh, it is a weak demonstrative. It can be used as a pronoun, that one. And stuff like that for special definiteness, like uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8. So the article is a very, very flexible uh, thing. This is a relative pronoun, as small as you can get, okay? And it means uh, which, and it's a, it's a W-H-I-C-H, and it refers back to, um, uh, um, to mindset, okay? Um, where am I now? So, so that's just the, the grab marker is the only thing that's different uh, between this and and uh, and a noun of article. Okay, this is in the neuter singular uh, construction. Okay, ha, which. Okay, so you can tell that this is not an article because of the grab marker. That's the only indication. Um. And ka you can translate as also. It's pronounced ke nowadays. Actually, in Hebrew, it would be ve. Okay, when I say nowadays, I'm talking about uh, modern uh, Greek and Hebrew. In is a preposition, one of 17 or so small prepositions in the manual grammar of the Greek New Testament by Dana and Manti, one of the best ever done, ever made. Okay, and uh, Christo Yesu. Now this is in the date of this is in the date of case, okay. Now the word coming up in verse six does not have to be in the dative for it to be, okay, the pronoun of Yesu. It only has to match gender and number, because the relative pronoun that we're going to see in verse six is 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 acting inside of that particular clause in verse six, the first one, okay. That's a nominative relative pronoun. We already saw a pronoun, uh, a relative pronoun, okay, in this verse. I just mentioned it, ha, okay, with the grab marker. That's also um, uh, a relative pronoun, and has is a relative pronoun referring back to uh, Yesu. So the cases, you can tell the witnesses that the, ca the, the, the actual case doesn't have to match. It only has to match number and gender okay those are the two matches that have to be in play okay that's why i said the other day that the candidate for um what is that uh, the candidate for uh alta okay um i believe alta is uh either panuma um or altu i should say is either uh panuma or feu when you're talking about uh verse 4 chapter 2 the one who wills to give these gifts to 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 the church proving that the holy spirit has a will now if you don't want that that was a good indication if you don't want that just give him uh you know first corinthians chapter tw uh, 12 verse 11 that is as stark as it can get that the holy spirit has a will and he dispenses uh 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 e you know each of the the gifts individually to whomever he wills Bulamai is the Greek word there for will. Thelo is the Greek word for will. And Jesus has his own will recorded in Matthew chapter 8 verse 3 and Matthew chapter 26 verse 39. Not to mention 
uh, the other verses that come into play uh, when you're dealing with uh, Jesus. Uh, Hebrews chapter uh, 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 10 verse 7. And the Holy Spirit also has a will according to verse 8 of chapter 3 of the Gospel. Kata Yohanin. That's just the deal. So they all have a will like God the Father. Okay, proving incidentally that the Holy Spirit is a person. The third person of the Holy Trinity, that's not third class. That's just the way you designate things at times. Sometimes they're not de designated like that. Sometimes the Holy Spirit is first. Sometimes Jesus is first. And the Father is last or second or whatever the case may be. See, Ephesians chapter 4 verses 4, 5, and 6 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4, 5, and 6. Okay, all right. And if that's not good enough, see, you know, uh, uh, verse 14 of chapter 13 of 2 Corinthians. And that's not, that's not even the whole list. See, verse uh, 14 of chapter, uh, 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 what? Of chapter 9 of Hebrews and Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, the famous one. Okay, that's just it. Not to mention the other Trinitarian passages, okay? Trinity passages recorded in Genesis 1-1, 126, 322, 11-7. And not to, uh, not to uh, uh, spoil the bunch, but added for free, Isaiah chapter, you know, uh, 6 verse 8. Now... The reason why he gave verse, a verse, I should say, six uh, to the, the group in Philippi, who had, a, or had an earthquake actually happen in, in Philippi, you know, m you know uh, several years before. They should have known better, to be humble. You understand what I mean? It's just like the Philippines over here. How many earthquakes are you going to have for, for you to be humble in the sight of God? You want another one? Yeah, actually, God can give one. Already happened in 2013. You want another one to be even more hum more humble? That's just it. I mean, how many typhoons do we have to have here and earthquakes and stuff like that and tsunamis and people dying left and right, 30 people dying the other day for people to just shut up before God? You know? I wonder, what is it going to take for people to shut up and give up their rights in front of God? That's not being cruel, that's just the deal. I mean, I, mean, I remember what Jesus said to a woman, I mean, it's not fit to give the, the, the bread uh, to dogs. Calling a, 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 a heathen woman, a, a non-Jew, Jewish uh, woman, a dog. And then she said the, the perfect thing to Christ. One of the greatest sayings ever said to Christ. We're, we're always talking about the sayings of Jesus. That's fine. That's wonderful. But how about the sayings that were done to Jesus? Okay. I'm not worthy to come under. You're not worthy to come under my roof and just say the word. I mean, that, that, Jesus said that was great. Never saw such a great faith in all of Israel. And then the woman said, yeah, but even the little crumbs master eat from the master's tables. I mean, that's some great stuff, though. Nicodemus <laughs> saying, well, how could I be born twice? Shall I enter into the second time in my mother's womb and be born? You can't make it up. The same to Jesus, though. <laughs> okay, you understand? I mean, Jesus will say, uh, say sometimes to these, to these people, be quiet and come out of them. Got him out of him, you know what I mean? We're too nice in Christianity, guys. You know, Christianity, I should say, in the singular, it's too nice. And that's why sometimes we lose debates and campaigns because we don't know how to balance the toll. Power and, and meekness. Moses was the most meekest man in the earth, says the Bible, and then he said, let my people go, saith the Lord. And if you don't, that's just it. That's, all, that's, all right. that's how Moses acted. Firstborn would die if you don't let my people go. And they died. If you don't have the blood on the door in your heart, you're dead.
That's just all there is to it. That's how God acts. Don't think of God like a grandfather God. He shuts up in heaven in a rocking chair, guys. Oh, yeah, you can sit all you want. Come, come to me. No, no. You have to believe in this teaching of nature one and nature two. And nature two was resurrected from the dead. You understand what I'm saying? Not nature one. Nature two was resurrected by the, uh, you know, from the dead bodily, by the way, resurrected from the dead. Again. All right, let's get back to this. I mean, that's just a deal. Well, I have this mindset which was uh, in our Lord, which was also in Christ Jesus. Have this attitude in yourselves. It says to the whole church, not just to the audience, it's the key to everybody. Have this mindset which was in our Lord, who, being in the form of God, so he was God already. Being. Now, that's a present active participle, okay, huparkon. We're going to come to that. But at the time that the apostle wrote this under inspiration, you understand what I mean? And somebody didn't, wasn't dictated to by the apostle Paul. I mean, sometimes he will do that. Sometimes he will write, he will write the letter himself. The letter to the Romans was written by somebody else, but he dictated uh, to that somebody else, okay, all right, you understand what I'm saying? By the Holy Spirit. Sometimes he will, he, 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 he will speak by, com by commandment, sometimes uh, by permission. The Holy Spirit trusted him enough to, to, uh, you know, to let the Apostle Paul write his own opinion. See, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 on marriage. That's just it. Tutagar franesto. Franesto en humin hakai en Cristo Jesu. The attitude was in Jesus. Has en marfe teu huparcon. Let's check out those words. Okay, let's start with verse 6. All right, now, Haas, we already dealt with that. That's a relative pronoun from the nominative side of the paradigm, okay? And that's just it. Haas refers back to the antecedent, okay, Yesu. Like I said before, it doesn't have to be the same case because Haas is acting inside of the relative clause. The relative clause here, let me check it out, okay, is Haas in... Marfe Theu Huparcon. Okay, and it goes on Uch. Uh, it says Harpagman, and then it says uh, Hege Sata Ta N Isa Theo. Okay. And uh, let me just uh, check this out over here. It's just giving me warning after warning. Okay, so that's uh, that's the relative clause. Okay, and it's acting uh, in the nominative case inside the uh, inside of that clause. I thought the clause was smaller than that. I got to check out another manuscript uh, app. Okay, and I can easily do that in my next study. But be as it be that as it may, it is still in a nominative singular uh, masculine construction. Relative clause. Uh, a pronoun, I should say, uh, in place of a noun. Pronoun means in place of a noun um, according to the Latin. It means in place of a noun. It's, it's breaking up the monotony, uh, Julius Arm. You know, these pronouns were meant to break up the monotony, okay? And that's what Julius Armenti says in his manual grammar of the Greek New Testament. And it refers back to the antecedent, Okay, Yesu, which is an genitive singular masculine construction. You know the paradigm for the word Jesus, Yesus. Okay, Yesus, Yesu, Yesu, Yesun. Yes, I said two, uh, two cases share one uh, construction, the genitive and the, the dative. Well, how do we know this is in the uh, genitive, in, in the dative case, I should say? Because of because of Cristo, actually, and also because of Hen. That's because that N, I should say, that that always takes the dative case. So I mean, that does not take the genitive. So right there, you're clear. 
Okay, that's only it only takes one case and that preposition, meaning in 